I'm Mark LaRanger. I'm the president and the CEO of Chrysalis. Mark, how are you? Always a pleasure. It's great to be here. Um, so we are at the culmination of another successful Butterfly Ball, ninth annual. Yes, very um, exciting. In the years you've been involved in the organization, there's obviously been a number of changes just in the world. I mean, we're, we're in an economy now where people who never in a million years would have been likely candidates to be clients are. Uh, I want to talk about a couple things. Uh, let's talk about how you first came to be involved with Chrysalis, the work that you had done, how you came to be the CEO, and then let's talk about some of the challenges that you've been dealing with the past few years. Sure. Well, I got involved in Chrysalis because uh, my private sector background uh, really lent itself well to Chrysalis Enterprises, our transitional jobs program. Um, I had been uh, owned my own company for a long time, started doing some consulting work, and started doing some nonprofit consulting work in the world of large scale fundraising events. And my name got thrown in a hat for somebody that would be of interest to Chrysalis for the Chrysalis Enterprises job. Got hired to do that about two and a half years ago. Quickly tell folks about Chrysalis Enterprises. Sure. So, Chrysalis Enterprises is a transitional jobs program. It's businesses that we own and operate that put our clients to work. And it's those clients that have the biggest barriers to employment. The ones that we hire for our businesses are those that are really unlikely to find success right out of the box in terms of trying to find a job. They've got criminal background issues. They may have some recover. They may be in recovery programs. Probably no legitimate uh, work history they can put on a resume. No one's going to hire them most sure. likely. So we put them to work. Um, and it's not so much the specific jobs that they're doing, it's more about the soft skills. It's showing up for work every day, working on a team, responding to supervision. Mm -hmm. um, the specific businesses we have are, are two. One is a street cleaning and maintenance business and the other is a temporary labor agency. Mm -hmm. um, every day we've got about 150 of our clients that are working for us. Um, and the intent is that they work for those businesses for six to 12 months and then they're in a much better position now that they actually have something on their resume to be able to move on and uh, get gainful outside employment. So you're running enterprises and uh, obviously, you know, uh, as things continue to proceed, you're now the CEO. So let's talk a little bit about that transition. So. Yeah, so I, the, the board asked me to step up uh, just over a year ago, about mm -hmm. a year and two months ago. Um, and we went through a leadership transition. And uh, never having led a nonprofit organization, I was uh, understandably a little bit nervous about of it. Of course. We've got high profile fundraising events like the Butterfly Ball. I've never done anything like that. <laughs> um, but the cause is just so easy to talk to people about. Mm -hmm. I mean, who amongst us doesn't know somebody that's out of work, that's suffered from unemployment? If you come down and, and visit our office on Skid Row and you see the conditions and you see what our clients have to go through just to get in our doors, it's really not hard to tell the Chrysalis story mm. and to do the work that we need to do every day to raise the money and keep the operations going and all that good stuff to make Chrysalis the success that it is. I think it was important, a point that you raised, that it is there is work to be done on the client's part as well. You know, so often there's some amazing organizations that are helping people, but they're, they're very short term in terms of their objectives, be they soup kitchens or shelters dealing with immediate needs. And it really seems like a lot of Chrysalis's work is ultimately long term about really helping acclimate people, getting them back. So what are some of the things clients are needing to do themselves to be accountable and therefore to really be successful within Chrysalis? Well, that's really a big part of our program. It's all about the self-directed job search. What that means is when someone comes to Chrysalis, unlike certain other programs that might be out there or government funded programs, we're not just handing jobs to folks or saying, go to this particular place, talk to Harry and he'll hire you today. Sure. That's not what it's about. What we want to do is be able to change our clients' perspective on their relationship to work and their and what that means to them, and help them develop the self-discipline to be able to uh, do the interviews, do the job search, and go out and get that job on their own. Because we know that whatever job they get right out of the box from leaving Chrysalis, it's not going to be the job yeah. they retire from, right? Sure. They're going to have it for six to twelve months. Transition. And they're going to yeah, it's a transitional job exactly. We want to make sure we've given them the skills to help them make that transition to the next job. Now we, we'll be there to backstop them if they want to help, if they need that help. Sure. But more importantly, it's about making sure they've got the self-confidence to be able to go out and do that on their own the next time. As we talked about, we are really in a completely unforeseen and unexpected period a recession, job loss, home foreclosures and the like. Let's talk data, let's talk hard numbers. What are you seeing in terms of a, even just a few years back versus now? How is Chrysalis really positioned to deal with an influx of people who likely never assumed that they would be homeless? It's a real challenge. Uh, we've had about a 40% increase in the number of clients That's seeking amazing. us in 18 months. You know, how do you, how do you scale up for that? Well, 
we're a nonprofit. It's not like we have money growing on trees. Sure. And it's not like our budget went up by 40%. In yeah. fact, when the recession started, we had to make some staff cutbacks. Mm. So we've had to get really smart about how we deploy our staff resources. And then we've got very generous support from volunteers who give of their time to come in and actually teach a lot of our classes and do the one-on-one -on -one resume work and things that are perhaps a little bit more routine and easy to teach our volunteers to do so that our full-time professional staff can focus on the more challenging case management issues that our clients present with. One of the big things that we're trying to, to deal with is folks like Eunice that we heard from tonight, our John Dillon uh, Butterfly Award recipient. Amazing story. Amazing story and not unlike what we're seeing today mm. where someone who's living a middle class lifestyle, everything's going their way, everything's fine, and then boom, something happens. In her case, her husband died from cancer unexpectedly and that led to a spiral of lots of bad things happening. And we're hearing that story time and time again, and I'm sad to say, or afraid to say, that we're gonna to continue to see that for the next few years. We all know that the foreclosure crisis is not going away. We all know that uh, unemployment is remaining at a, a very uncomfortable rate and doesn't look like it's gonna come down dramatically for any, any, in any short period of time. So uh, I think our services are only going to be needed more desperately as we uh, get through this choppy economy again. You know, it's interesting that you talk about sort of in the day-to-day -day business world that innovation is really key. And I think what's really relevant even in the nonprofit space is that you've really had to innovate, realize that as different circumstances and challenges and needs of clients present themselves, you've got to change. If you could really look out and say that there are some new things that you would like to see Chrysalis continue to evolve in, new areas of service, new areas of focus to assist clients, I'd love for you to speak to some of those kind of, what's the next year to two years about in terms of some objectives? Well, what we're really focusing on our effort on uh, right now is making sure that our curriculum is relevant to our clients. I mentioned that we've got a little bit of a changing face of our clients in terms of their skills and abilities. Sure. So we got to make sure that our curriculum, which consists right now of six to eight classes depending on the client, that what we're teaching in that curriculum is relevant to the new clients that are coming to us. Mm -hmm. We also need to go deeper. Um, these days, every job search is done on computers. And the computer skills that most of our clients have are really limited. And we do offer a basic computer class in our curriculum, but it just doesn't go deep enough. It doesn't provide the, the real background that somebody needs to really get onto Craigslist and do the, the searches with Google and attach an, a resume to an email. So we're looking at expanding that curriculum, uh, which means expanded facilities to be able to do that and more computers and all the rest of it to make that happen. So. Fortunately, we've got things like the butterfly ball that will help fund that effort. We're also looking at starting a, a whole new curriculum around customer service because we've looked at where most of our clients end up landing jobs. And the common denominator we see is some interaction with the public. It could be in retail, it could be in hospitality. Even if it's in logistics and shipping, you're interacting with people all the time. And so a basic understanding of that interaction with the public and customer service. And dealing with really stress important. and realizing that if somebody is you know, having a bad day, that, that doesn't mean you need to react in kind. It's one of That's those. Right. One of those unique challenges yeah. when you're dealing with customers. So. That's right. And, and given that most of our clients have uh, backgrounds from prison, sure. the way you deal with anger and Conflict prison, mitigation is yeah. a little different than that. Um, you did talk about the butterfly ball. So to wrap it up, it is such an amazing event. It really is often the hottest ticket in town, the creme de la creme in the entertainment industry and business. Talk a little bit about it. Why is it so important? What's so special about it? And why does it continue to be as successful as it is year in, year out? Sometimes I have to pinch myself that I get to be part of an organization that does something like the butterfly ball. It's Absolutely. not the world that I travel in normally. <laughs> so it's... Get to hang out with some really beautiful people. <laughs> beautiful people, yes. And get my picture taken with yes. a lot of beautiful people. It's really cool. Um, but what's really incredible about it is you've got people like Rebecca gayhart Dane, you've got people like Brett Ratner who have been involved in this thing. From Whose the story today was just so amazing. Like yeah. I actually like choked up a little I, bit. I so. didn't know that story. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know the story about his father. Um, we've got folks that are connected to us for a lot of reasons and they could do anything they want with their charitable endeavors and yet they continue to come back to Chrysalis I think because it resonates with them on a very personal level. They've got either a personal connection or they get it. They get that having a job is critical to being able to get on any kind of self-sufficiency path. Mm -hmm. 
So we continue to get very strong support from folks that, uh, that believe in the work that we do. We've had great support from studios. And I think what we've created with Butterfly Ball is kind of a, an exclusive environment. It's, it's an expensive ticket, and mm -hmm. so we don't have 1,000 or 2,000 sure. people here. It's 600 and 700 people. Um, people can let their hair down. Unexpected things are going to happen. <laughs> and they Maybe do. some words from the <laughs> stage are said that, uh, a little bit about PG-13. Yes. And that's cool because people are here to have a good time. Sure. And also to raise money. And we're going to raise a lot of money tonight. That's outstanding. Mark, thank you. No, my pleasure. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, you for, uh, for joining us tonight and all the work that you've done and that Brad have done uh, for Chrysalis. You've been a big part of our success. And I'm a big fan of MIPTOC. So Excellent. It's, uh, it's great that I've had this opportunity. Thank you so much.